With one round left in the 2017 British Chess Championships, three players are sharing the lead. Luke McShane, Gawain Jones and John Ems, all with six and a half points out of eight. And the scene is set for an exciting last round. But before we contemplate that, let's focus on the game of the day for round eight of this tournament. And uh, my game is the crowd-pleasing effort between Peter Wells, Grandmaster and Connor Murphy playing with the black pieces, a very promising young player. The game starts life as an orthodox queen's gambit, but soon veers off piste with black playing the unusual move, a6. Wells is very good at specific play, exploiting perhaps losses of time in the opening, um, and indeed he has to be very uh, accurate if he wants to take advantage of this, this move a6, which could really be a loss of time if met properly. As shown in the diagram, Black's probably threatening just to go uh, D takes C4 and B5. So Wells takes on D5 and puts his queen out on B3, attacking D5. Normally speaking in the queen's gambit, you really, with white, want to be putting your queen on C2. But the idea is, as I say, very specific. White's happy to open up the game by playing E4. And he should do that because he's got an advantage in development. Well, the pressure on d5 is great. Black's got to take. And now another very specific move, bishop c4. So here we have a, a grandmaster throwing caution to the winds at the end of the tournament. He's got to put in a strong finish. He's willing to take risks in order to win games. The onus is on black now to find an original solution to this immediate attack by white. Well, obviously, White's attacking f7, so Black's choices are limited as to how he defends that pawn. In the end, Murphy played queen to e7. He could have tried queen to d7, um, allowing White to regain the pawn, with the idea of playing b5. <coughs> Excuse me. This seems like a reasonable approach, because... Uh, I'm not sure I see an easy way to a white advantage if black plays this way. If white retreats his bishop, black can take the pawn, knight f3 and now queen b4 check, which is not really what white wants. The queens come off. I mean, white certainly has compensation there because he's got good development, but he doesn't really want the queens off at this stage. Perhaps white can improve on that by going queen to e3, setting up some cheapo discovered checks. But even there, Black's got to check on b4 himself, chop the bishop off, and then go knight e7. Which, despite the dark squared weaknesses in the black camp, uh, again, should be okay for him. Um, he's getting ready to castle, and white's d pawn could be weak. So there are mutual pluses and minuses about this position. Well, Murphy could have done that. And of course, we see now one of the ways a Grandmaster wins games. He forces his opponent to find original solutions at an early stage and sets up uh, an original position where his superior strength might tell. So Queen E7, and now another very good move by White A4, just clamping down on B5, maintaining the position of his bishop on, on E6, uh, on C4. And whilst it's relatively easy to see the way White gets his pieces out, Knight E2, uh, bishop f4, rooks to the centre. It's not that easy for black. Black's got a delay now in development, and he's got to be very careful about how he proceeds, particularly now that b5 has been prevented. After b5, of course, white could take twice, because there's a pin down the a-file. So black played knight f6, and now bishop g5. To be honest, I thought this had to be a completely original position, especially in master level chess, but uh, I was amazed to find that this has all been played before in a game Schlechter versus Janowski, Monte Carlo, 1902. And in that game, White decided to play knight g e2 in place of bishop g5. White won that game in 23 moves, but there were a few adventures there, so you could do worse than looking that game up. Going back to our featured game, bishop g5, of course, is, is very plausible, and... Um, puts the question to the pinned knight. And black played bishop f5. Well, of course, black can go 
h6. Perhaps he should have done. If white wants to maintain momentum, he's probably got to take the knight and take the pawn on e4. But there, queen g6 <coughs> seems okay for black. He's hitting the knight, he's hitting g2. If knight g3, then we can play the very good move a5, revealing that there is a dark side to a4. The b4 square is fixed, and after knight f3, black can play bishop b4 check with an okay game. I mean, if white really wants to take this game into the realm of fantasy, he can cast on the queen side. But that really is, uh, you know, all or nothing chess. However, even that might be quite difficult for black to play because, as you can see, his development is not that great. Murphy decides he can't afford any more time wasting with pawn moves. He gets a piece out. Now, like Schlechter before him, Wells plays knight ge2. Bishop g6, perhaps a slightly surprising move there. Voluntarily moving the bishop, but now of course knight g3 is coming up. So I can get knight g3 in, castles, rookie one, and then chop on e4 without loss of time, then uh, he's going to have the better game. But after bishop g6, knight f4 was a good move. And now Murphy moves in with the ambitious queen b4. Not sure I like that move very much. And Wells exploited it by moving the queen back to a2. No way does white want the queens off. Instead, what he wants is to maintain pressure against e7, uh, f7. So knight bd7. Black couldn't have been happy with that move, but the fact is that white is threatening knight takes g6 and bishop takes f7, uh, bishop f7 or bishop takes f7. So what other move does black have apart from the abject retreat of the queen to e7? So he played knight bd7, knight takes g6, f takes g6, and Wells wastes no time keeping the black king in the middle. And white castles. King c7, rook a c1. So white has got obvious compensation for the material he's given up. It's hard to say whether black is lost at this point, but as you can see his position is extremely uncomfortable. We're waiting for moves like d5 to blow the whole position open. Black can scarcely contemplate taking on d4, just letting white play a move like rook fd1. He tries bishop d6, rook fd1 anyway, and Murphy played queen to a5. He really is setting himself up for a big finish here, although his point was surely that he was attacking the loose bishop on g5. Now, could he play better? Well, he can try and develop a rook. I mean, that would be the start of progress, wouldn't it? But so with rook a d8, something like that, is it runs into a move like bishop d2. The queen's in really the wrong place, the black queen. And if queen b6, we get the move b4 in. And again, you can see the white attack is proceeding very easily and, uh, and black is struggling to coordinate. So going back to the game, queen a5. And now white must open lines against the king, hence d5. Black blocks with c5, and now the bishop comes to e6. Just setting up threats in the long term. <coughs> b5, and now a really splendid move by Pete Wells. b4. White well, was coming to that anyway, I'm not sure Black could have stopped it. But it nevertheless is a very, very attractive move. With lines opening up, Black's probably got to take it with his queen. And now bishop d2. Very well played. Trapping the black queen on an awkward square. Setting up ideas of knight takes b5 check. Murphy tried queen d4. White simply took on b5. And I don't think there's any way back from this. The black pieces are simply too exposed. The king is too vulnerable. Murphy took on h2. A last desperate try. And then h5. But bishop f4 check. Completed. A miniature by Peter Wells. So I enjoyed that game. With most of the games on the top boards being hard fought and rather dry. This was an excellent effort. And it's the type of chess that we like to see. 
Well, as I say now, we move on to the final round. What will that hold? Only time will tell. <laughs>